So we're going to start with the alkalinity test now. And when you unpack uh, your materials, you'll notice you'll have some square mixing bottles, some test tubes for measuring, uh, and you'll have uh, three different chemicals here. We have them marked one, two, and three, but as we get through the lab, we'll identify them as we use them. Now we're going to ask you to get your sample A, and you're going to do the plastic mixing bottle. You're going to fill it all the way up once again, making sure that you've completely filled that bottle, and then pour it into the square glass mixing bottle, and do the same thing for sample B. So the first chemical you're going to add is phenolphthalein, and if your instructor has marked it, this will be number one. Go ahead and cut open your pillow, and then you're going to pour that into sample A, and then you're going to get another packet and pour it into sample B. After you've poured in your phenolphthalein, you're going to go ahead and swirl both sample A and sample B until the contents are mixed. At this point, your instructions will state if it remains colorless, jump to step six. This is fairly normal in this area, so don't be alarmed if it's clear. At that step, you're going to go ahead and add the brome Cressel Green Methyl Red powder pillow to both samples A and samples B. and you'll swirl those also. So now we're ready to titrate both our sample A and B. And this is helpful to have your group at this point. One student can swirl, another student can drop, and then the other students can help count. It's very important that you keep track of the drops. The goal here is to titrate, uh, and that is you're looking for a color change until it stops changing shades of pink. It's going to move through several color changes, as you can see on this video. And once you get to the very end, the very last drop that causes it to stop changing, that's the number you want. If you feel you've gone too far and you've added two drops and it stayed the same color, please subtract that drop from your total. And you'll repeat the same thing for sample B. Okay, so for this one, when you get finished, the number of drops you get, you're going to multiply that by 17. That will give you the milligrams per liter, so you can get a calculator or sketch that out on a sheet of paper to help you out. Reminder, when you're finished, please be sure to pour all of your chemically treated samples back into the waste container and collect any leftover wrappers uh, to be thrown away in the trash can. And then return everything uh, to the container as you found it prior to the lab.